welcome to my tutorial. Today, we will be looking at two-way ANOVA test. So I have this topic, Effects of Teaching Method and Class Size on Student Test Performance, a two-way ANOVA study. Today, I will be using both the SPSS and PowerPoint slide to enable us understand why we have to use two-way ANOVA test and the basic assumptions of two-way ANOVA test and when to apply two-way ANOVA test. I encourage you to sit relaxed and watch the tutorial to the end so you'll be able to learn how you can do this on your own using your own data. So in this case, you can see that I have the number of students in the class as 30. In two-way ANOVA test, you, you must have the dependent variable uh, as a continuous variable. If you collected data, for example, in a different context using Likert scale uh, measurement scale or using a Likert rating scale, you must have to convert the responses, the data, into a continuous variable, just like I have here. In order for you to have that particular variable as the dependent variable. Now, in this topic, you can see that the, um, for us to successfully perform two-way ANOVA test, we need to have at least two independent variables. So, uh, in this case, the independent variable number one here is the, is the teaching method, and then the second one is the class size. And then my dependent variable is uh, the test performance, in this case, uh, that is the score. And then what is the aim of this study? The aim is to learn whether the two factors, I'm referring to these two, whether they will have effect on students' test performance in a class of 30 students. Okay? So, um, if you look at my code in here, um, you can see that I have teaching method already coded. This is my independent variable number one. This is the independent variable number two. And let me take you to the variable view uh, to understand how I've coded this. So you can see under the test score, uh, there is no value here. I did not impute any value showing that it is a continuous variable. Under the class size, I have one as one as small class and then two to represent those in large class. And then under the teaching method, I, I, I have those in the traditional method coded as one, those into the uh, model teaching method coded as two. Now, uh, let me take you back to the um, data view. So to perform the two-way ANOVA test, there are some sets of um, hypotheses that would, would likely have to guide the data, the, the analysis. So in this case, you can pause the video to, to read the hypotheses that I've posed so far. And so I posed for the teaching method, the main effect hypothesis. Because one thing about two-way ANOVA test is that it gives you the opportunity to check out the main effects, which is specifically for the effect of the each independent variable um, on the dependent variable. So in this case, I want to check the effect of the teaching method specifically uh, on the test scores okay and then secondly the effect of the class size on the test score and then it also gives you the opportunity to check out the interaction effect of that is this teaching method multiplied by class size to tell you the effect okay so let's look at the, the, the hypotheses that I've posed and I said there is no significant difference in test scores between students thought using traditional method and those thought using the modern method. And then the alternate hypothesis we read that there is a significant difference in test scores between students thought using the traditional method and those thought using the modern method. And same 
applicable here um, to the point of um, class size. Under the interaction effect, so I have the, the, uh, the hypothesis posed as follows. There is no interaction effect between teaching method and class size on test scores. And of course, the opposite is the alternate hypothesis. These hypotheses allow you to test both the main effects of teaching methods and class size as well as the interaction effect between them. So let me take time to explain the, the, the concept of the interaction term and why we have to need the interaction effect in two-way ANOVA. So I try to summarize that here. And it's like saying you can pause the video and you know to read out this um, um, on your own. But let me give you an idea of why the interaction term. An interaction effect highlights the importance of considering how different factors work together to affect outcomes rather than looking at them in isolation. So let us head over to the uh, analysis to, to perform this test to see uh, what the result will be um, in the analysis. So I will head over to analyze and go to general linear model and, and I will select univariate test. So here uh, in the dialog box, so you can see the dependent variable is the test score. So and and, and I like you to keep an eye on the underscore because SPSS doesn't allow you to uh, have space like test space score. So the only way you can put them together um, to to have them together can be either to merge them together without space. Or use underscore so that is why I have all of them named this way all right like student ID test score uh, class size and teaching method so uh, just in case if you are new to using SPSS now the test score uh, will be put into the dependent variable box so I have my class size and my teaching method into uh, the fixed factors now uh, the next thing we need to check is to go to the option. Uh, I want to see the descriptives of statistics. I want to see the estimate of effect size. I want to see the homogeneity test. So this test, uh, this descriptive statistics will give us the preliminary um, example result of the mean and the standard deviation and then uh, tell us the number of people in the class and then tell us um, the number of those in, uh, in the teaching method, traditional, and so and so forth. And then the, the effect size is, is, is going to give us an idea about partial eta squared. So when we get to the, uh, to the outputs of the analysis, we'll be able to understand this clearly. So we click continue. The next we want to do is to check out the EM means, okay? Estimated marginal means. So in this case, I, I want to um, put all of them into, into the display means for the class size, the teaching method, and the interaction in the interaction term into them. And then in SPSS, I'd like you to take, keep an eye on, on, on this. So you can see the interaction means, the class size with asterisk, uh, and then by teaching method okay that is like saying class size by teaching method multiplied by teaching method okay all right so i click continue and then i will go to the plot i would like to see the plot uh the the interaction how it is is doing i like to see that and then when you check that into uh the any of this can go into anyone you can have class size into the separate line you can have the teaching method into the separate line whatever you want to do that's not a problem then you click add make sure you click add to have that into the plot and then here you can use the bar chart so you can use the line so but let's first use the line chart and then maybe later we can also check out whether uh, it would be better understood using the bar chart so we click continue then we click OK. So this is the result of the univariate analysis of variance. Okay, uh, that's two-way ANOVA test. 
And so if you go to the first table you're going to see here, it gives us um, the number of, of people in the small class, those in the large class. And that will also give us the traditional, the teaching method. So we have the number, there are all 15 in total for each. So uh, 15 for those in the, in the class, uh, small class, 15 for those in large class, that's a total of 30. Same thing here, that's a total of 30. Next is to move to the descriptive statistics table. Um, under this table, we have that. So this gives us a clearer idea of, of what we have better than this. So um, here you can see that under the smaller class, we have uh, traditional methods having six students those in the modern class nine students that's a total of 15 just like we have here and then under the large class uh, for uh, traditional method we have nine students and the modern we have um, six students and that gives us a total of, um, of 15 so that is so when you check out the total of both the small and large class under traditional and modern so you have 15 15 and that gives us a total of 30 and if you go to uh to the spss so you can see that's just what we have here which is a total of 30 students now the next part we want to go to is the levin's test of equal variances and I have summarized the Levin's test of equal variances into um, uh, using the PowerPoint here um, to explain this concept. As I said, the Levin's test is used to check whether the variances of the dependent variable, so in this case, test scores in my own example, are approximately. So in your own example, in my own example here is test score. So in your own example, it could be in any context, okay? It could be in, in a classroom, it could be in agricultural setting, it could be in any in any field at all. It's not a must that one way or two way ANOVA test must be done using student score, no, or in education context, no. So are approximately equal across different groups defined by the combination of levels of the dependent variable. So in my own case, the teaching method and class size. Now, I said, if the variances are significantly different across groups, it suggests that the assumption of homogeneity of variances has been violated, which can affect the validity of the ANOVA results. So we want the p-value greater than 0 0.05. So look at here. If you check the Levin's test of equality of error variances, so you can see that our focus here is to have a p-value that is not statistically significant. If Levin's test under this part in line three, he said, if Levin's test indicates that the variances are not equal across groups you may need to consider alternative approaches such as transforming the dependent variable to address the violation of homogeneity of variance assumption. So in this case, this analysis violates the assumptions of homogeneity test. And normally, if this were to be a real analysis for a real study, this analysis is supposed to end at this point because we want to be sure that we want to meet a non-statistically significant um, results here, this line. These, 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 and these are supposed to be non-statistically significant. I hope you get that clearly. But this is for the purpose of demonstration for you to understand, uh, learn how to perform a two-way ANOVA test. So that is why I'm proceeding. If this were to be a real study for tests, or for journal article publication, this analysis is supposed to end here because we have violated the assumption. Now, one way to do that is to go and transform your data uh, using log. That will be performed in a separate video so that we'll be able to transform the dependent variable test score 
and then be able to um, use it to conduct this study and then um, to meet the assumption of the Levens test of equality of error variance.